So good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome um, to my short lightning talk today. Um, I would like to talk about um, heat and how to get started. So this is um, more to get a brief overview or a short introduction on heat and how to, yeah, how to get started with it. Um, my name is then Jella Ebert. I'm working for T-Systems. Uh, you, you might have seen uh, we have our um, Open Telecom Cloud product. We were headline sponsor. Maybe you came to our booth and got some nice T-shirt. Um, also, um, Christian Behrendt prepared this presentation with me. He's from Beta Cloud Systems um, Solutions, but unfortunately he cannot be here today, so you just have to take me. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, we, I would like to talk about heat. Um, so, I would tell you shortly what it is, some, some kind of terminology and what, what the con concepts and architecture are, and what is, from my point, an easy way to, to get started, to get in touch with heat, what you can do, what documentation, what templates are around. And if we still have some time, then I have a short uh, video to show a sim simple presentation on how heat works. Yeah. So, yeah, um, what is heat? I, I had a look um, around to find a really nice sentence about w what heat is. And um, I think uh, this, this sentence um, has all in one about what it is. It's one of the main OpenStack projects, and it's the orchestration component um, of, of the OpenStack. Um, so you can launch um, VMs and applications uh, based on templates and I think one of the main um, things is like you can define in your infrastructure as a code. So I just copied that from the OpenStack org site um, and yeah, I think that is the main thing he, he provides. Um, on the next page I would like to show you um, a really simple overview on, on how it works. So you, you have your template file there um, where you define how your infrastructure should look like. And you have a, a command line, you have an API interface, which then tells the heat engine what to do. And the heat engine is, um, yeah, let's say doing all the work and at the end, uh, you will have resources like VMs, you will have um, as an output or like networks, like IP addresses, like software deployments. And these templates are um, YAML based format and yeah, they, they describe how your infrastructure should look like. Means um, they, you can reproduce um, your infrastructure every time with the same template which is quite neat. Um, so coming to some, some terminology, we're talking about templates. So the, uh, they are in a, in a special YAML format, as I stated before, and they describe how your VM, how your application should look like. And um, these templates also define how the resources and the relationships between your VM, your software deployment, your IP address network should be. Um, within the templates, you describe your resources, so your VM, your network, your application. So these are represented by these little dots here. And a stack is then a group of connected resources. That means the stack is the, the whole thing you deploy. This is all the, the resources you created by one template are defined by a stack and this stack can be then managed by you with the um, appropriate heat commands. Um, I was looking around to find a nice picture on how, how the heat architecture looked like, and I, I thought that's at least an, an easy one and not so complicated one to um, see um, how it works. It's basically, a different picture what, from what we saw on the first page. So you have your template, you have a API or a dashboard where you have your REST calls and um, then this is being queued to the heat engine and the heat engine is the heart of, of it all. Um, 
which um, knows the function, which knows how to treat the parameters, uh, parse the templates. And he, the heat engine is the one talking to all the other projects like Keystone, like Nova, what to do. Yeah. So this is, this is the main orchestration um, thing, which is yeah, doing, doing all the work. Um, so let's have a look on how to get started. I think the, the first um, important thing is to get to, to understand how, how the template looks like um, and what are the important sections and what you, what you should know. So a template has always the same structure. Um, do you see my mouse? No, okay. Um, the first is um, the template version. Um, this needs to be a valid version. This is described in um, the documentation. So 2015 is something a little bit older. For example, Okata is 2017, 02, 24. Um, and the template basically describes um, which features are available, which hot template to, to use. So with every um, release, there will be also a new hot template version depending on what functions and features are available. Um, then you have a description. This is an optional parameter. It's of course nice if you write a template and someone else is going to use it, then what, what is it doing? Um, then there is a parameter section where you can define um, all the necessary parameters. You can de define default parameters like security group or which network to use or which SSA key to use. Um, and the really important part is the resource part. Uh, there is where you define which resources you want to have created, like the VM, for example. Um, and the output section is quite nice to define um, what kind of output do you want to have when the resources have been created. For example, I'm going to create a VM, so it would be nice to have in the output section this is the IP address to log in, or this is the SSH key to log in. We will see how that works later. Um, so I have prepared a really little example which does work. <laughs> I, I tried that before. Um, so this is a really, really basic example to create a VM. I just picked a template version. Um, and here in the, have a short description, okay, simple hot template. And um, in the resource description, I say I like to have a VM, it's called my instance. It's of type OS Nova server, that's the resource type which he knows. And I'll give that a few properties. So what kind of image to use, which flavor to use, which is my SSH key, if I have um, more than one subnet in my tenant, then it's good to specify a network, otherwise he won't know which one to choose. And the last one, um, the user data format raw, will tell that, um, for example, um, the, that this is not a software deployment, that the cloud init uh, functions should be deployed as um, or e executed as they should be in a cloud. So you can define here if you want to have additional software deployments or not. Um, yes. So you can deploy that and at the end you will get a VM with an IP address and you can log into this. Um, if you want to deploy it, you need to have a few commands. Um, and I think from my point of view, these are the most relevant commands. You can have a stack list to see what kind of stacks you have. You have the stack create commands um, where you specify the template and the name. Um, with stack show, you can see um, the, the output, uh, what, how your stack looks like, what, oops, what resources have been created. You can also see the events. Um, and of course, you can also delete your, delete your stack. Um, I just got the sign that um, 
I do not have that, that, that much time left, so I can maybe show the video to you if, if you like uh, afterwards. Um, but I will also provide it to this presentation. Um, these are the few commands I used in my demo, and um, the, the video um, will be uploaded as well. So I have a tenant on my Open Telecom Cloud running Ubuntu, doing these commands. And at the end, I would like to give you some really useful links on where you find heat template documentation, um, the official heat templates from openstack.org, where there are also application LAMP stack heat templates, which are easy to use. Um, we are also are on Open Telecom Cloud GitHub, where you can find some simple templates. And yeah, thanks for your attention um, and listening to me this afternoon. And yeah. yeah.